Friends, welcome to my workplace at Rana Ghat, West Bengal, India. Done elsewhere, this is anterior chamber intraocular lens implanted without a PI. Patient has developed secondary glaucoma. Patient came to me with intraocular pressure of 36 mm of mercury. With medications, it has come down to 26 mm of mercury and I have taken up the case for surgery. My plan is to remove this anterior chamber intraocular lens, do anterior vitrectomy and implant an iris claw lens. I have started this surgery after superior rectus brittle suture, conjunctival peritomy has been done, there is some adhesions, SICS was done. After the peritomy, this is wet field cautery for hemostasis to get a clean area for incision. I take a 50 number birth per cup lead and apply this incision. This incision is probably coinciding with the previous SICS incision. And now this is a sclerotomy. Antichamber is flat. So without removing some vitreous, I cannot form the anterior chamber. So sclerotomy has been done and now I introduce a 23 gauze vitrectomy cutter to a mild amount of vitrectomy, little amount of vitrectomy then stop for some time to see if expulsive corridor hemorrhage starts or not. Wait for a few seconds. Yes, the intraocular pressure is on the lower side. So the expulsive corridor hemorrhage has not started and I do some more vitrectomy to decrease the uh, intraocular pressure and so that I am may be able to form the anterior chamber. Yes, after doing some amount of vitrectomy, I find that the intraocular pressure has come down and now I do a stab incision at limbus at 9 o'clock and now I inject 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and the anterior chamber forms very nicely because the intraocular pressure is low now. I have removed some amount of vitreous. And now I form and uh, now I enter into the anterior chamber with the help of this keratome and enlarge the wound. I'm going to put sutures so I didn't make a proper sclerocorneal tunnel. And now this is 180 degree away. This is another stab incision, another paracentesis wound. Since my plan is to implant an iris claw lens, these two stab incisions are 180 degree away. Now here I find some adhesions, some uh, iris tissue or vitreous stands, yes, it, got, it is just detached it and now I am going to mobilize the haptics. And mobilizing this haptic and now I find that the anterior chamber has become shallow so I inject some more visco some more SPMC and now it will be safer to remove this intraocular lens I take the Sinsky hook again and mobilize this haptic at 9 o'clock and it comes out. And now with the help of a Macpherson's forceps, I remove the lens. 
and now I do anterior vitrectomy I'm doing this vitrectomy through the main wound irrigation is through the right side port yes so vitrectomy is being carried out and now my plan is to do a peripheral aridectomy at 6 o'clock and I find that the iris tissue is stuck so I had to be safe I could not I didn't remove a lot of iris tissue there is some hyphema at 3 o'clock that was removed and now I inject visco in the anterior chamber over the iris and now my plan is to place the iris claw lens I check the haptics both the haptics are checked now the lens is placed over the iris with the help of a Macpherson's forceps and now I have an iris holding forceps a stout forceps hold the lens and now I'm going to tuck the haptic at 3 o'clock clave the haptic at 3 o'clock first so I this haptic goes behind the iris and now I tuck the iris in the haptic and it is done and now I hold the lens with the left hand the tucking instrument comes to the right hand this is a Sinsky hook yes this haptic is enclaved nicely I leave the lens tuck the lens and it goes behind the iris some more visco and now my plan is to suture the main wound this is a shoeless suture first bite is from the groove to the sclera posterior sclera and now this part of the surgery is first forwarded the second bite this is the third bite this is fourth and now we come back fifth bite this is sixth one This is seventh bite, and finally, this is the bite from the anterior leaf into the groove, and it comes out. And now we come back to normal speed from here. I'm going to put this is two throws. I'm not going to make the final knot now because I may have to open this wound if necessary so I just keep the suture in this way at this moment 
now I inject air and then inject triamcinolone acetate to check if there is any vitreous and this will reduce inflammation very nicely and now I remove the triamcinolone acetate there is no vitreous in the anterior chamber but lot of triamcinolone acetate has gone behind the iris in the antivitreous through the PI. Here I removed some more iris tissue so that the PI remains patent. And now I do some more anterior vitrectomy to remove the triamcinolone acetate molecules because in some patients intraocular pressure rises to very high level because of triamcinolone acetate. So I'm going to do some more vitrectomy and in that process most of the triamcinolone acetate molecules will be removed. This purse plena sclerotomy is very useful to remove little bit of vitreous to form the anterior chamber and later on to remove the triamcinolone acetate molecules. Now I inject some air in the anterior chamber and now I close the sclerotomy wound. This is an X suture two bites and just put the knot. This is 10 O nylon suture. So 10 O nylon can be used for closure of sclerotomy. And now this is the final knot of the shoelace suture to close the main wound. And now the threads are trimmed and the knot remains buried in the sclera in the group of the wound. This is moxifloxacin some, mo some moxifloxacin will go behind in the antivitreous through the peripheral aridectomy and now the conjunctiva is opposed to the limbus at the uh, right end this is an X suture I don't bury the knot because I remove this conjunctival suture after five days or seven days but if we plan to keep this suture we can bury the knot this is a single suture and now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber Now I check the pressure, it was low, so I inject some more BSS. And now this is dexamethasone, the superiectus brittle suture is removed and the case is concluded. Let us see some post op pictures taken one week after surgery. Anterior chamber is quiet, 
intraocular pressure is normal 14 millimeter of mercury visual acuity with correction of refractive errors is 6 by 9 patient is so happy and I am also happy thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills and inspire you to take off challenging cases